Welcome future attendees of Singapore Life 2020 in January in Singapore. Uh, we are here in the University Hospital uh, Schuf in Lausanne and I would like to briefly ask a few questions to the main operators in the life cases that will be transmitted from Lausanne, uh, Olivier Miller and Bernard de Bruyne. So welcome uh, Bernard and Olivier. Um, uh, so the transmission will be uh, given, will be done on uh, January 16. First uh, Bernard, maybe uh, can you uh, explain us what is the objective of the life case that you will be performing? Well, if I understood correctly, we will do two live cases, one about a valvular disease, uh, more specifically a TAVI case will be presented and then we will switch to a completely different topic, I would say, but still in interventional cardiology, namely the physiological assessment of epicardial coronary artery stenosis. We would like to be as educational as possible in showing things that most probably many of you are doing in routine clinical practice, but we would also like to open the door to the investigation, and many progress has been made in this field, to the investigation of the micro, micro circulation, so the microvasculature of the heart, which remains a black box. We will try to um, show you a couple of new indices and new measurements which have been developed recently. Uh, thank you very much, Bernard. Maybe uh, before going to Olivier, this brings me to the second question because it's indeed a bit complicated today to see uh, across the forest of you know parameters uh, resting and, uh, and and other parameters in in physiology. Can you briefly, in a, maybe one minute, tell where where you are standing today? Yeah, well, with pleasure. Even if it is a little bit. Uh, exaggerated or oversimplified, I think we have to divide the coronary circulation in two big compartments. There is the epicardial circulation and the microvasculature. F to evaluate the epicardial vessels and more specifically to evaluate stenosis seen on the angiogram in the epicardial vessels, we have one index which is the gold standard which is fractional flow reserve which is an index which is achieved during maximal hyperemia. For those who do not like to induce hyperemia for many reasons, and there might be good reasons to do so. There are resting indices, I won't go into the details, but there is the first one, which is the IFR, then the RFR, and the DPR. So these are the three main resting indices. But again, we believe that the gold standard for the epicardial vessel remains the fractional flow reserve. Then, and still we remain in the epicardial vessel, we like to define what is focal and what is diffuse. And therefore, we recently developed a kind of two-dimensional fractional flow reserve, I would say, which is a fractional flow reserve obtained during a pullback, steady pullback. And from this pullback maneuver, and this is the work of my colleague Carlos Collet, we, we are now able to derive a PPG index, also expressed in percent, which tells you to what extent this epicardial lesion is focal or diffuse. And this will probably have, in addition to the stationary FFR, I would say, this will probably have uh, importance in terms of indication for uh, revascularization. And then there is the microvasculature. And the microvasculature has been explored now, and we are able to explore the microvasculature also on the basis of guide wires. And the first most important and best validated index is the index of microvascular resistance developed by Belfirum. There are already some uh, important and interesting and robust clinical outcome data. And then more recently, we are working together with my colleague and friend Nico Pels on continuous thermodilution to derive not an index of microvascular resistance, but to calculate absolute coronary flow and absolute microvascular resistance. This is still work in progress, but if possible, we would like to demonstrate that during the live cases.